You sit down on the piano seat and adjust yourself. You place your hands on the keys, gently tapping them like you have done for the past 12 months. Except this is the real thing. Everything has led up to this moment. Your palms and fingers have become oily. So oily that they seem like glass. Tough and focused, but brittle and jittery. You start playing, but your fingers slip. Your memory jitters, your heart falls. But then, you take a deep breath and realize that you have been focusing too much on your technical work and not your heart. In that moment, the deafening nerves shrink into the darkness, leaving something called the zen state. Your physical self fades and your hands become the melody, ebbing and flowing. When we try to do something perfectly, we do them imperfectly. When we try not to think of something, our brain tries hard to make sure that the thought isn't around, which ironically brings the thought back into our minds. When we try too hard to relax, we become more stressed. One of the best ways to fix this is to act through Wu Wei. And this concept of Wu Wei is quite interesting. But before we get to that, we're going to travel back in time to the Warring States period of China, where lived a philosopher named Lao Tzu. He was a native of Ku Ren, a village in the state of China or modern-day Henan province. He was a bit of an enigma. The most notable thing was that he had originally worked in the court of the Zhou dynasty. But then he was like, screw all of your corruption and backstabbing shenanigans and decided to be a hermit instead. So off he goes. But before he left the empire, a border guard saw him and asked him to write down all of his teachings, which we now call the Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching is the first book dedicated to the philosophy of Taoism. So what did this book explore? Well, Lao Tzu places us into this philosophical domain where he gets us to reflect on our addiction to worldly desires and that we should find tranquility in nature instead. And don't get fooled by these seemingly short stanzas because while some lines are really easy to understand, others are just hardcore old Chinese Shakespearean. That's why the book has been interpreted and translated to over 250 50 times just behind the Bible. Hey, but what's this mysterious concept that Lao Tzu introduces called the Tao? Excellent question, my friend. The Tao commonly is translated as the Way. Now, there are two versions of the Tao. The first version is called the Cosmic Tao. It is thought to be formless and transparent, but manifests in many forms of the physical world. Now, the Tao isn't a personal deity in the traditional sense, but it's more like the physical fabric of space and time. For us, it can mean a particular way of a thing. A way is a quality like simplicity, spontaneity, and compassion. Practicing the human way means aligning oneself with the natural order and avoiding excessive striving or attachment. Wow, that totally makes sense, Aubrey. <sighs> okay, look, the Tao is something that is so abstract. The heck, even Lao Tzu says in his book that the Tao is forever undefined. Small though it is in the unformed state, it cannot be grasped. There's also so many cults of Taoism popping up that with their own set of practices that there's never been a unifying Taoist thought. However, some of the main values include effortless action, spontaneity, and simplicity. The famous Taoist phrase, Wu Wei can be broken up into two parts. Wu simply means does not exist. Wei is used to describe human behavior, especially with the need to act within nature. Acting without Wei means that we should stop blindly doing things according to social conventions and instead rely on natural intuition or instinct. Being one of effortless action means that you must be in the present because we're so addicted to thinking about how each part of our lives can be changed, we fail to see the bigger picture. If we're constantly chasing the illusion of a better person, they will never be happy. Consider this, your friend has a million subscriber channel, you have 10 subs, you get jealous, you spend all your time creating the perfect video, thinking of all the factors for it to pop off, and then when it fails, you get the big D, not that one. You tried so hard, but it just didn't pan out. All of this anxious energy, stress energy, cognitive energy that you burnt means that there's not enough to sustain your perseverance. You give up. As Lao Tzu states in his book, practice non-action, work without doing. Taste the tasteless, magnify the small, increase the few, reward bitterness with care, see simplicity in the complicated, and achieve greatness in small things. Another way to think of it is this. If you're one of those people who believe that all of time exists, then think of the present as this infinitesimally small slice of bread. As such, there is no sadness, nor tragedy, nor happiness within it. There is only the physical state of you within a physical realm. Due this perspective, all the doubts and apprehension that you experience while doing something is taken away. Almost like the Jedi code when they say something like, there is no emotion, there is peace. There is no passion, there is serenity. There is no death, there is the force. All these people doing crazy motorcycle stunts, bouldering a natural arc above crashing waves, solving three Rubik's cubes while juggling them. 
It's all part of being in the flow state, where effort fades and instinct kicks in. Lots and lots of people believe that being in the present is the highest form of being alive. But what does being in the present truly mean? Does it mean taking every surrounding color, taste and smell into our bodies? Does it mean ignoring all of our lessons that we have learned in the past and not caring about the consequences of our actions for the future version of us? Nada. Being present means to be fully engrossed in your surroundings, like when you're white water rafting, scared of future drops, but also keenly aware of the waves crashing at the present moment. Because when you can achieve a sense of being in the present, you're able to achieve a sense of peace. And if you're someone like me, always thinking back to that embarrassing moment when you peed your pants in class in 2006, or when you sold Bitcoin for $10, towers avoid regrets because regret comes from living in the past. And on top of that, it is much, much easier to forgive others if you live in the moment. Another important concept in Wu Wei is a sense of lead. It is like aligning yourself in harmony with the natural world. And what is the natural world? It's a series of back, forward, left, right, upside down movement of things. From water flowing in a stream, to the natural life cycle of a tree, from a tiny seed grazed by the wind, to a decaying mess lying on the forest floor. We all had that experience, one time or another, of being deeply connected to something larger than ourselves. When you are going on a hike in the woods, sunlight in the canopies and the squirrels chattering allow us to focus on how nature really is a music concert. In this open expanse, your feet just aren't on the ground. They are like roots that have dug into the clay soil of earth. Something that we might call a sense of oneness. Lao Tzu has something to say about this as well. The 10,000 things. Things rise and fall while the self watches their return. They grow and flourish and then return to the source. Returning to the source is stillness, which is the way of nature. One way to achieve Wu Wei is by getting fucking stoned. Before signing a big deal, apparently business people will often insist on getting to know clients at boozy meals because alcohol makes it difficult to fake feelings. And this is like somehow where Wu Wei arises from as well. Or you guys can just do emptiness qi wang or meditation using visualization techniques to focus the mind to achieve relaxation and reduce your stress. However, all towers do agree on this one thing. To be successful, you have to remove all expectations from your performance. Just like the piano concert that I mentioned earlier, you can't control the way that the audience will respond to your piece. Our minds are constantly making predictions about the future. Like when someone kicks a soccer ball, our cognitive algorithms will try to calculate where it will land. Our expectations are more egocentric. You expect to headbutt it. And if you don't manage to headbutt it and it hits your nuts instead, with that, it elicits a sense of frustration and infinite pain. <laughs> As Alan Watts states, the only way to make sense out of change is to plunge right into it, to move with it and to join the dance. And Wu Wei is also reflected in other cultures. For example, in the Hindu epic, the Bhagavad Gita, it talks of a concept called the Nashkama Karma. This is basically like acting without any expectation of a personal gain in mind. Everything they do, they don't give a shit. <laughs> because they believe that the soul is this conscious instrument of the universe. So if you accidentally make burnt chicken, then the universe makes burnt chicken. If you teach a child, the universe teaches the child. So surrendering yourself to a higher being means that the ego is washed away, inner peace is won, and the soul is spiritually liberated in a process called Moshka. So you might be asking me, hey, isn't Taoism basically asking me to not try at all? Like if I was stuck in a place like Compton, then I should just let nature take its course? But what if nature's plan is to just to leave me in this hellhole? Well, good question, Derek. Lao Tzu and other Taoists say that it is not the act of trying that is bad, but it is the fact that we try and become attached to our materialistic society that is bad. According to them, only by letting go of your clothes, real estate investments and career will you be free from a place of needless pain and comparison. And in fact, this issue has been debated for over 2000 years. And Taoism wasn't the only religion people followed. There was a whole battle royale of philosophical schools all finding each other to find the truth. Confucius told people to try as hard as you can so things become effortless. The Taoists told people to not try at all. Another philosopher, Meniscus, as the great negotiator that he was, said to try, but don't try too hard. Like if you wanted your friend to become a pro gamer, then you give him a PC with good specs, good Wi-Fi, and good food. But besides trying to give him a platform to practice on, you let nature take its course. The unique thing about Taoism is that it states too often Moral preaching is confusing. We don't need all these books, podcasts, and ministers to help lead us onto the heavenly path. So don't worry about trying to change your future lifestyle 
or relationships. Just know to change the present.